Hello and welcome to this beautiful day on Sydney Harbour for the Manly 16 Foot Skiff Club Heat 8 of their club championship. Um, brought to you by Sail Media and joining me, James Beery, in commentary is Jessica Riles and club president Rolf Cohen. Welcome Jess, welcome back and welcome for your first time Rolfie. Thanks Jimmy, <laughs> please be gentle with me. We will. <laughs> so um, the uh, uh, the eight rules, the, um, this is the last seat for the club championship. I think we've got one more day left in the sailing calendar here at Manly Skiff Club, being the kids' swap day next week, which is always a very popular day. Yeah, definitely. Um, you'll no doubt get wrangled into sailor boat again, Jess. Yeah, I'm sure someone will ask me to sail. I love kids' swap day. I think everyone does. I think it's a yeah. favourite in everyone in the club's calendar. And um, Ralphie, you've got the busted foot. You've retired from sailing anyway, but... Yes, yeah. it's true. I haven't. Uh, I don't think I've had a competitive sail for about three seasons now. But uh, how good is it? It's very good watching. It's amazing to watch the racing. So uh, I found my space. Perfect, mate. Um, well, what we might do, we might have a. Actually, what we'll do, we'll get Jess to uh, tell us all about the weather first. Yeah, so we have an east southeaster today, averaging about 12 knots at the moment, but it's been coming and going. I'm expecting it'll drop off and strengthen slightly throughout the day. We have a little swell, um, but with the lighter breeze, that might be more challenging for our boats as they'll be sailing into the swell upwind. Um, yeah, we're looking at five laps for our 16-foot skiffs and four laps for our 13-foot skiffs. Beautiful, and um, just hearing 10 knots at the top mark, so you're pretty bang on. Yep. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, we might have a quick look at the overall standings in the club championships to date. And got the 16-foot skiffs up there first. Imagine signage on 10 points. Um, they can't be beaten, so this is sort of a parade lap or parade day for them. So congratulations to Nathan, Brett and um, Mal on uh, winning the club championship. Second overall is Sail Racing, Felix Scratch on 20 points. Um, I guess they, they were rigging up in North Harbour. We worked that one out, so they're here. Moon and Yachts with Dan Turner on 21 points. And Sutek, who have had a, had a stellar uh, season, 28 points. Red Pumps, young Tyler Dransfield on 32 points. Fluid Building on 45 and so on there. And in the 13 foot skiffs, this is where all the out to play for today. The, um, it's pretty tight at the top between Harkin and Ebix and hello to the, uh, the people from Ebix which I believe are at the club having lunch today with, um, with Sean Lilly so hopefully they sign back on as a sponsor of the 13s for next year so buy them an extra extra sc schooner or something there Sean and we'll, uh, we'll take the rest on. Um, so Harkin, young Heidi Bates on 11 points, she's uh, what a, what a first Amazing year. Amazing first year. Yeah, they've done so well. Yep, yeah, and um, Gemma Hopkins on Ebix in second of 14 points. So, you know, there's still a little fight there to go. Yep. Um, fluid Building is third. Don, Don Rollinson on 18 points. And then Cybertech Group, Theo Franklin on 30 points. But there's a change of skipper on board the, uh, the Cybertech Group today with... Ash Napper jumping on with Kobe Napper. So um, Ash won the Flying 11 Nationals alongside, who was it? It was Bridges. Taj, Taj, Bridge, Taj, 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 Taj Bridge, Taj, my, yep. little, my little legend, Taji. So um, they wrapped that up, which was great to see. And Ash in true fashion never shows too much emotion. So. No, but definitely good bloodlines uh, on that boat. Yeah, well, um, Rob's the only male in that family not to be holding a national title currently so which is uh, <laughs> <laughs> which which is uh is good so uh, you know rob rob's won plenty of titles uh two, two with me and uh many more with treno and joe and a few others so so you, uh, you're close close with rob in the sailing side what what, what price odds do we give the uh, australian championship skiff uh, title to a napper 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 one day I, I would see that as a strong possibility. Um, Rob has discussed that with me. I mean, apart from the uh, the Boyd brothers, I can't think of any other. Well, the Bowens, the Boyds. Um, I don't know if there's ever been three, so there's a challenge for well, the Nappers. The two and a two and a dad. That'd be pretty cool. That would be amazing. Um, yeah, I think Ash should firmly price himself up as a, a 
Skipper, he's the right size for it, for 16. He's got no fear. Watching Kobe play basketball last week, uh, he, he plays basketball for St Augustine's and uh, unfortunately the boys had a narrow loss, but he's uh, quite a tall lad, so sheet hand written all over him. Yeah, and he's proved himself in the 13s this year with a win at Nationals. So It's almost an unfair advantage, isn't it, having three yeah. nappers? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, as you can see, the skiffs are slowly making their way out. We're just near the Bombora in the Sound. So, um, not long not long to go, We're probably 13 minutes until a start, so hopefully the skiffs get a little wriggle on. I believe there's a crew change on the Moon and Yachts being Matt Stenner's off on hooligan duties, which is a TP52. Mm -hmm. um, so he's out today and replaced by Flynn Toomey off the Balmain 18 foot skiff boat, and Flynn's a really good young up-and-comer in that respect and this shouldn't be a challenge for him at all. Um, another notable replacement I believe is on the IME with Hugh Stoddard away, unsure of the reason why. Joel Beeshall is on the back of that one with Trent and Rob so... Nice feeling. Got some good replacements here. <laughs> yeah so well, Joel sailed uh, one of the Belmont boats in the Nationals and um, yeah, definitely didn't disgrace himself, that's for sure. So yeah, and yeah, I think we'll see all 16s in a big rig today. There was some discussion about going number one or number two jib, um, so I'm not sure what boats have decided, but I think bigger might be better today. Yeah, just to get you through that joggle out here, yeah. right, Jess? Yeah. So what's the size difference, Jess, between the number one and two Hetzel, roughly? 6.5 square metres for a number one and I think 6.3 for a number two. Right. So not much in it, but enough to get you going through the waves if you need it. Yeah, just a little bit deeper and knucklier and goes to the forward tang out the front of the bowsprit, right? Yeah. So we're going to be, as Jess alluded to, on a compass bearing course um, to finish off this season. Um, on with five laps for the 16s and four laps for the... Uh, hold on, we've got a change we're just hearing. Four laps for the 16s, three laps for the 13s. Yeah, seems like they've changed it. Maybe the breeze has lightened off and they would prefer a longer leg rather than more laps, which makes sense. We've got a bit of a uh, obstacle course to go through for anyone that uh, is familiar with uh, March in, in the Balmoral area. The annual Scout Regatta is on today, the Sirius Cup, and there's a few, uh, few, uh, few back-end skilled sailors having their first day out by the look of it, so there should be some interesting uh, course alterations required. Well, <laughs> as you would know, Rolf, you've got to start somewhere, and I believe that's where yourself, Clint, uh, Anthony King and Anthony myself. King. Yep. We sank um, a 16-footer on our first day out in the flying ant and uh, <laughs> promptly headed back to the beach with our tails well and truly. <laughs> well, it didn't deter you to uh, give up sailing. So well, one of us went on to do pretty good things in a boat. <laughs> that wasn't me. No, it's, uh, it's a good place to start sailing. I think uh, it's not the, the competitive nature of what we do in our juniors and uh, we definitely came around to Manly with a, a skill set different to others, but we still fit in nicely and have a good time and uh, I think it's uh, sailing is sailing and hopefully all these guys we're looking at here will one day pop up at Manly Skiff Club in a 16. Maybe not that first boat, the rest of them. Well, the first one lost his rudder, so you can't, you can't blame him, him for that. Don't give too much of a hard time. <laughs> but the... Um, yeah, so as you can see, it's quite clear. We've got most of the harbour to ourselves, or most of the sound to ourselves. We've got the Far 40 national titles, a huge contingent of Far 40s out here of four boats. So, <laughs> they, um, def that class is definitely slowly dropping off to probably a, uh, a twilight boat. <laughs> Unfortunately, it's quite a nice boat back in its day. So if it's 2.30 start, Jimmy, what are we looking for? Are they all going to be here on time? It looks like they're... Lamont's, uh, Lamont's start from Washaway Beach by the looks of it, mate. They're, uh... Yeah, it seems like everyone's a bit sleepy at the end of the season and <laughs> <laughs> they've forgotten how long it can take to get out here on a lighter day. But they are making their way here slowly and I know my dad's the race officer and he's... Is he, will he let it go on time? He will make sure it goes on I time. I love it, I love it, I love it. He says, serves them right if they're late, so... We like commitment. Yep. 
but he says it in such a nice voice, you can't get angry at him. <laughs> exactly. Jimmy, you might remember, I think, Jess, you're too young, but uh, 94 or 95, we had the state titles here at Manly and the rain came in and it hazed out. You couldn't see 30 or 40 metres, and I still remember coming round the corner about the bombing as Trevor Sale Pass, having started out here somewhere, you had about a 10-minute lead at the one-second mark. <laughs> <laughs> he went on to win that heat, and I think Craig came second, Typhoon. Yeah, there's some, uh, definitely some stories to be told for this exact thing. Like, I know um, there's our young charger of Heidi and Orlando on the Harkin. Um, Harkin came on board this year as a sponsor and Grantley and the, the team, they're revelling on it from uh, from Harkin and g'day to all them. I must say from uh, having a couple of years now off the water and watching a lot of racing, it's pretty damn exciting seeing the size of the 13 foot skiff fleet that turns up every week and I'm, I think I saw about three days live and the other days watching you, you guys on this boat and um, yeah, it's pretty exciting stuff. Yeah, definitely. I've come through the 13s. I think I did three years in 13s. They're such a good boat and such a good culture between them. Um, they all get on really well off the water and respect each other on the water. Um, some really good competition too. So, it's, yeah, good to see. And am I right in saying you sailed a 13 this year? You jumped back in one to help out? One yeah, of the I actually sailed on Harkin when Heidi was off at a Flying 11 regatta. Um, yeah. How'd you go? Yeah, good. I think we came second. Very good. Might have been one of the club champ races too. Very, very good. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they're a great cl class and it's good to see the numbers building in them. It's, um, you know, it's a testament to the club and in particular without harping on about the Nappers, to Rob Napper, who's put in a lot of hard work with yeah. um, organising a lot of the 16 guys and girls to come down and donate their time on a Friday evening to take the 13s out and train them and get them up to speed so we don't have the kids going, you know what, these things are too hard to sail. Mm -hmm. We're out of here, we're going somewhere else. So well done to them. And there's a bloke that we thought would definitely miss the start, Typhoon, Craig Nichols. <laughs> so for the viewers at home, Craig will be going through his pre-race setup. He's probably just done about an hour of stretching at home. <laughs> um, obviously a healthy breakfast, um, you know, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, he's probably, he went to bed probably about seven last night. He's, he's a true athlete. And... Uh, <laughs> You should see that come out in today's racing. First, I will note, he is the first skiff, I think, on the start line, which is unheard of. Absolutely unheard you told of. You it was a one o'clock start, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> so our five-minute warning gun has just gone. Um, empty start line. Very empty. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have a few boats miss it if uh, it's on a general. I don't think you can use the excuse of the boat below me Push me over the line. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow. interestingly, last week we had a U flag, which is almost like a black flag, and um, Fluid managed to sail over the line, so it was lucky it was a general recall for them. Probably hoping for another one today, by yeah. the look of it. <laughs> Fluid having a little swim. So that's Shebang following Craig. They're obviously negotiating their bet for the day. That's six, seven, eight. We might get those two over there. We'll probably get about ten. But I can see some, some tall masts still only just popping around Bombora, Mark, and we're all the way down near Washaway, so... They've got, they got some sailing to do in four minutes. There's Red Pumps and Botany Access on screen. So they're looking good. They'll, they'll, uh, they'll be here, so we've got yeah, about ten, I reckon. After that, we're going to look like a... Another five or six or seven are going to be... <laughs> well, the, the, the one that really needs to get down here is Sail Racing with Moon and only a few points behind them. They don't need to give them a head start. A head start. Yeah, for those who don't know, the 16s will start first and there will be a bit of a wait. I think it's five minutes and then the 13s will go into their five-minute sequence. So... Um, there aren't many 13s here at the moment, but they do have a bit more time to get here. But you can see, like as we said before, like with the, with the Hark and Heidi, she's serious. She's here. She's yeah. ready to do it. You know, she's the you know the the guys on um, on Ebix. You know, they the minute um, 
Harkin went in the water, they should have been following. You, know, you, yep, you don't want to don't want to let your competition go from the moment they go in the water. Yeah, not only that, but with an east southeaster, pretty typical in an easterly that the breeze will flick around. You want to get out here early, um, watch the course, see what the breeze is doing, see what the waves are doing. Um, for the 13s as well, with the 16 starting first, you get a chance to look at where the good 16 boats are going and follow them if it's looking good. There's the IME with uh, Joel Beeshaw, who was handed the keys to the uh, the Ferrari and a Van Du, the 18 foot skiff for the final heat of the JJ Giltons last week, and came a credible, I think, third in the race. So it definitely comes from sailing royalty and perfect pedigree. Well, Jimmy, I uh, enjoyed watching uh, the coverage of that regatta from home. I can't drive with the boot until next week, but uh, certainly a great, great regatta to watch. The 18 footers, they were uh, exciting. And when you see people like Keegs and all the regular faces out there, it's a bit of fun. Yeah, and it was good to have a bit of international and um, also three boats from interstate. We had one from uh, Victoria and two boats down from Queensland and one of the Queensland boats which was Bigfoot Bags and Covers which is you know Mark Sear which has been a great sponsor for 16s and 13 foot skips here at Manly for as long as I can remember. Yeah that's um, the Bigfoot. Bigfoot. Yeah he, he jumped on board and sponsored uh, Dave Hayter last season and um, has continued on that sponsorship and Mark every day down over there at Double Bay was he was pumped as as you know Mark is when he's at around sailors and he was so pleased that the Queensland boat actually you know was getting up there and they won a race and everything so you know it was good so under a minute to go here I can see uh, there's still still about four or five that are uh, walling around the, the Bombora so it looks like yeah, about a 13 boat start has made it on time and a division B has formed themselves of about five yeah there's our late comers on screen there about 30 seconds to go, boats on the line are starting to set up. With a light breeze, you don't want to be too far away from the line, so as they're slowing down to get themselves set up, um, they'll make sure they're keeping up with the boats around them. We've got Imi down the pin end. I can also see Moon and Yachts also down the pin end. Which is the right end, Jess? Seems like the pin, pin end. Pin end. Looking good <laughs> on that. Looking the way they're coming off now. The way they go. All clear. Yeah, clear start. Those that are here. So you're the only skipper on board here, Jess. So yep. you're telling us which way we're going today. It's. See, you've said that before, and I've gotten it wrong. But. <laughs> well, we're, we're we're a committed crew. We'll put in. We won't we won't play hindsight on you. We'll stick with you. Yeah. Look, I think what I would do is pin and start. Um, I don't think I'd want to go too far over to the left. Go as far as you can. But I think with North Head further up, the breeze might start cutting out. Um, even though there is a bit of south in it, the east might cut out under North Head. So I'll be choosing a good lane to tack back, and then potentially finding a good lane to head up on top of North Head to the top mark. I found usually in an easterly picking a side is always good, so we have seen a few boats um, have needed to tack out early. So they either need to com commit to the right or tack back up and stay over on the left. And it is very light, we're just going past the employment hero with just one on wire and they're not exactly a big crew. Yeah. It's definitely dropped about four or five knots from when we first got out here. This is the type of day where you need to have crew weight really far forward. I would start getting a cramp in my shoulder because of the way I'm steering because I'm sitting so far forward. <laughs> <laughs> so a few boats are splitting off towards Middlehead. Cunningham's in there, but the bulk of the fleet are heading over. They kind of were going that way anyway, weren't they? <laughs> the um, boat that Jess has been steering for the past two weeks, the Red Pumps Red. Yeah, Red They're Pumps heading Red. heading off over there. Yep. Here they are on screen in Cunningham's. Cunningham's one of our great sponsors. They've been around for a number of years now, so. Yeah, you can see the technique with sailing in these lighter breezes if you're only getting one 
or one and a half out on the wire. Normally we'll say we want the boats to be dead flat, but on a day like today, a bit of heel will just keep a bit of weight in the sails and a bit of power. Um, I wouldn't like the boat to flatten out too much. You can see an example there with Typhoon on screen. Their body weight is close together, far forward in the boat, slight heel, and they've got some really nice height. They're putting some good separation on the boats below them. Maybe not as fast, but they are putting some separation on. Sort of seems to be heading towards Watson's Bay, Typhoon. I'm not sure if that's <laughs> an observation I'm making. <laughs> Definitely the pin end of... Uh, got some legs, but yeah, the angle's interesting. Usual, usual story. Yeah, so Moonen and Imi, that's Imi on screen there. Um, I think typically Moonen will like to take a lower line to keep some power. They're a bit heavier than others. Um, and Imi following out that way. So yeah, they seem to be going faster, but not as much height as the boats above them. And we do have a Manly Ferry coming across on screen. I think they'll do the nice thing and go behind all of our boats, which is lovely. A new signage there on Altus after, a, I think from the beginning, almost the beginning of the season, we've been calling them and it's been hard to figure out who it is because there's obviously no signage on the side of the boat. Yep. So, uh, it's good to uh, finally get some signage on there. Looks good. Shout out to Big Brother Gavin, who probably uh, cut that out with scissors himself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it seems like I'm using a good line there on screen. They've got two out on the wire now, just bending their knees when they need to. It's much more effective if you can get two bodies off the boat and on the wire. Um, yeah, put the weight in the mast rather than putting the weight on the boat. Robert be rubbing his hands together, even dropping five kilos out of the back of the boat from the skipper. But yeah, uh, yeah dropping more than that with Joel would be he'd, be, he'd be rubbing his hands together for sure. Just noticing on Sutek there, it seems like, oh, I can't tell who that is skippering. I know James has been out for a while. That could be James back on board today. I know he's been injured. Try and get in there and have a bit closer look in a sec, Jess. Just waiting for the uh, the Fairlight Ferry to pop on through. Yeah, we've got Moon and Yachts on there with um, Flagstaff in the background. So it looks like the boats, I was wrong. They've got a nice line taking them all the way in. Um, tacking right off that cliff could be beneficial as when they tack, they can get a nice lift as the breeze bends around the point. seems like that lower line that these boats have taken is paying at the moment. They've managed to get some really nice boat speed rather than going for height. That's all just waving at us saying hi guys, have a nice day. <laughs> Should yeah, I? so that is James on sheet, Josh is normal and Josh Tasker I think steering the SUTEC today. I've got to say from uh, watching some of the older videos back around the Nationals of some of the old races in the 60s, 70s, 80s moving their way up, how about the, uh, the signage people come a long way and how they do things on the boat, they look fantastic. I mean, Scotty or uh, the imagined signage guys down at Brookvale, they're obviously uh, champions at it, but the boats look fantastic. Yeah, it's good to see the colour out on the water. It's um, in the um, yeah, like one of the really cool signs around. If you go to the Sail Media Facebook page, have a look. Is a picture of the Black Knight. It's uh, pretty cool signage and things that they can do. You know, it's actually a knight riding a horse with a. I, I had, yeah, I did see that. I so, did, yeah, it's pretty cool. So at this end of the course, it's looking perhaps closer to 10 to 12 knots. Um, Imi and others are consistently having two out on the wire now. So it seems like looking for the breeze today and getting being first to that breeze is going to be very beneficial.
and the shebang there on screen, and King, he's obviously won a number of championships and so forth as a sheet hand, but... Um, Did you not steer a club championship? I was reading it on the board the other day in the club. <laughs> he steered the last race in that, that series. <laughs> he knows what he's doing a lot better now as a steerer uh, than, than 10 years ago, but uh, definitely a, a legend of a sheet hand when he was doing that. Yeah, they're one of our favourite boats when it's right on the on the edge to hang around. They're always good for a uh, <laughs> thrill and spill. So who's you got on today? Just Jubes and his brother Jamie? Yes, normal crew. Yep. And we have the Fireball and Botany Access on screen. So this side out over here, it, uh, it's de definitely paid. It's uh, quite a comfy lead to that... Uh, couple of three or four boats that have headed out this way. Yeah, well, the couple of boats that started late, late, being the fire stopping in Outback Marine, I think they may almost be in front of the boats that went over towards Middlehead. Uh, middle head. He'll do one of those tic-tacky things he does and he'll, end in, he'll be in the lead in a couple of minutes. Well, I mean, just capsized to windward, did they? Really? Just in the oh, wow. back of shot almost there. The red pumps squeezed old head out and sent the typhoon on the merry way. Red pumps will probably head on in there and get the, the closest they can to those rocks and hook into usually an extra couple of degrees of lift. Anking and the shebang over there are doing it, so I hope the red pumps will be thinking the same thing, I reckon. Yeah, just point out something interesting on red pumps, if you saw that tack before. Um, Jay went in front of the mast, so that's a forward hand. On a light day to keep your weight forward, even through a tack, they'll sometimes run around the front of the mast. Um, can get a bit slippery up there, so do as at your own risk. But it seems like that was a really smooth tack for them. I know it's not a, uh, a manly specific thing, but I couldn't help but notice as the red pumps tacked and saw the red hull. Just uh, a shout out to the big Johnny O who left us uh, not too long ago. The big fella's up in the sky now and uh, he always had red boats and it just as they tacked, it was the first thing that popped into my mind. Yeah, um, you know, Johnny Oliver's going to be sorely missed. Um, you know, huge member of Middle Harbour 16 foot skiff club and obviously the skiff fraternity. Um, great mates to many and a, a mentor to, to just about Anyone that came through, didn't matter what club you're from, he was always willing to help out. Um, you know, Daryl Millam, that's sailing now on the uh, Sail Media 13-foot skiff, he cut his teeth sailing with Johnny Oliver. Um, Daryl's now sailing with his um, son. And then the, um, you know, like there's always young, young people, and you know, we alluded to kids swap day, like Johnny always used to go, well, why have I got to do it? And you'd go down past Middle Harbour and have the biggest smile on his face. You have kids climbing all over him. He's a big, lovable human being and going to be uh, sorely missed by everybody. 100%, 100%. So we're slowly making our way up here to the first top mark and the fleet has spread out quite a bit. Into yeah, our top mark is just off South Head, um, so they've got a long way to go. I think after four laps they'll be ready to be done. <laughs> they'll be uh, protesting for a... <laughs> so looking at Shebang there, I mean, you'd probably say they're in second spot. I'd say Moonen's got too much of a, a lead when they come back, but other than that, I'd say Ant's got the rest of the fleet covered. Yeah, it looks like Sail Racing is the boat just in the behind all those sails there, the only boat that's really gone out far to the right. Um, they seem to see things that no one else does at times, and yeah, they might come back okay. They'll be working hard between Sail Racing and Moonen, only one point apart for second and third. It's a long race. I think on these days where it's lighter, I know I always sailed better when I was in a good mood. So even if we didn't have a good start, we'd have to keep ourselves happy. Um, happy boat is generally a faster boat. It's very easy to get frustrated in these conditions. So I hope everyone is being nice to each other. I think so. I think that's what everyone does in these days. Yeah. Motivational speak. <laughs>
pats on the back, that sort of stuff. Yep. Craig, yeah. Craig was big at that. Rob Bapper was huge at it. He was always, you know, words of encouragement. And... you got to remember that Rob was always up the front of the fleet, so what, what did he have to get unhappy about? <laughs> Se se second spot is unhappy. They might have been but unhappy about that cap size they had a few minutes ago. Yeah, it'll be interesting to find out later on what caused that. He'll be okay. They'll, they'll, um... I fear for the crew, not the other crew. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to argue with Trent, are we? Nobody has. A couple of cleats tried once or twice, but they didn't work. So the fireball squeezing out there uh, nicely as well. Yeah, that's sailing really well. I think they really thrive in these conditions. Um, they're a bit lighter and a boat that has been a bit up and down this season, but these conditions, I think they've often had a good start, so good on them. Yeah, they got a new mast um, at some point this year, and I think it's made a good difference for them. I know James Pennington, it will, who's their sheet hand, will not be sailing next season. He's doing some stuff overseas with uni, so they are looking for a new sheet hand next year. Did you sign up, Jess? Oh, me on sheet would be something to see. No, you just did. <laughs> <laughs> so Moonen have put a nice lead on at the moment. So while we wait for them to come, Jess, what other goss have you got for next season's cruise? Has there been any other movements in the rigging park you know of? Oh, not really down there enough to know. Um, presentation night is when we hear all those <laughs> talks, so... Negotiations after a yeah. uh, couple of drinks. <laughs> Imi's uh, done a good job forcing their way back through this little group here and chasing Moonen, so... They're obviously on the comeback trial from that uncharacteristic swim. Yeah, definitely. And is Fireball one of the boats in the, uh, the infamous Keg Cup, Rolf? Is that... I think they are, yes. Yeah. Who else is in the uh, Keg Cup? Did you have your research pattern go? Okay, we've got Contemporary Pools, Nozomi, Employment Hero, Fireball, Bartley Constructions, and Typhoon. It's almost its 50th year and of in, since inse inception and um, that was a lot of the doings of Ian Hutchison and who was the other one that was St. Bob's or Digger Barnes or involved? Yeah, way before our time, about 50 years ago. I think that's a great shot there of sail racing. You can see Felix, their skipper, is crouching in, sitting underneath um, the other two out on the wire to try and keep their body weight as close together as possible. And do you think they'd be nervous with the lead that Moonen's opened up on them at this point in time, Jess? I think they would be a bit nervous, but these are conditions they should feel confident in, so as long as they keep their heads cool. It's a long race, we're only one eighth of the way through, so long way to go. So I would have just said first the top yeah. mark, that's the difference <laughs> with you being a school teacher. You actually understand fractions and things. <laughs> I'll just look at you with a puzzled look. So Moon and on screen there are on way to the top mark. Ruffy, nice, nice up the front there. He's moving quick through the water. They do look good. I don't normally get to see this end of the fleet, but they do, do look good. Yeah. yeah. Dan Turner, Simon Hoffman and Flynn Toomey. This is a boat that has always been good in the strong winds and I know a few years ago the lighter breezes is something they wanted to focus on and they did some training and it's really incredible to see them. doesn't matter what the conditions are now, they are always a strong contender, so well done to them. Yeah, we used to rub our hands together when it was a bit lighter and when I was back sailing and I was up against... Sausage. Daniel and, and the uh, Paulie McKenzie, the wobbly sausage, and um, the... Um, yeah, we used to always rub our hands together when it was light, just going, we know we've got them rattled today. Alright, here they go, around the first mark. First place, Moonen. After a swing. Lead. Looks like Imey's going to be second. Yeah, nice recovery. With the advantage of having a swim upwind, 
Yep. Versus downwind is huge, right, Jess? It's yeah, like... absolutely. It's absolute pain capsizing downwind. You need to pull the kite in. And I know in an 18 it's even worse. You just race to be first to the fin. That's all you have to worry about yep. in any boat. And then you don't have to pull the kite in. <laughs> you wouldn't know Rob Nap had an engine arm a while ago, would you? No. No, he... he um, Fireball's yeah. close though. Fireball is right on their tail. Yeah, absolutely. And then, and and then so what's one we haven't spoken about much? Botany's uh, popped into fourth. Botany Access. That looks like. Who's that up the bow, do you think? I was going to say it looks like Justin Brownville, but that can't no, be right. No, no. Spinnaker went up. <laughs> <laughs> Here comes the old man of the sea. Well, one of them. Ant King in the shebang. So boats downwind are heading the same way that one upwind, so they're heading off down to North Head. And that's generally the best practice, right, Jess? Yeah. You, you go where the winning way upwind, yep. you go that same way downwind. Absolutely. It seems like they'll be squeezing a bit to make sure they stay under the head, and then they'll hopefully get one jibe down to the bottom mark. About a, about a minute gap, and we've got a, a really congested... Pack B, I'll call it, and uh, Bartley. Shout out to the Bartley boys, leading leading the big pack. Sutek and then Red Pumps, then we've got Typhoon, then we've got Employment Hero, and then we've got... Imagine, Imagine signage. Oh, yeah, and then Big Dave Burke at teaching uh, the boys how to sail on the fluid. Yeah, I might just mention Bartley, who were the first of this little group to go around. Um, two weeks ago, we had a handicap start, which is the first handicap start we've had in years, and Bartley managed to win that. Um, so, well done to them. Really cool to see them at the front end of the fleet. Yeah, they're um, actually one of the most calmest young teams going around yep. I've ever come across. Like, I, when we covered the... Um, the 16 and 13 foot skiff nationals down at St George. I got to lift back down, or on the last day down, with the the Bromlows, and yeah, you know, went and had a chat with them, and unbelievable. I was yeah. like, guys, you like, let me check your pulse. Like it was, <laughs> we might get underway and go. As, as the Cunninghams come around, we've still got the fire stopping Altus and Outback Marine, plus a few others probably somewhere straggling along. Yeah, it's really cool to see Michael Childs back on board the Cunninghams. Um, earlier in the season, in first half of the season, he injured his shoulder in one of the races we were um, commentating on, and he yep. took some time off, unfortunately didn't manage to sail in the Nationals. But he's been back on, I think, third week back. Um, yeah, great to see that it seems like he's mostly recovered that shoulder injury. I believe it has been sold. I don't know who to, but I did hear that you're correct, yes. What did you hear, Rolf? I heard that Cunningham's has been sold to Queensland. There you go. There you go. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. It's a really good boat, and it's nice to see that there's um, some good interest up in Queensland. Our Nationals next year will be at Harvey Bay, um, north of Brisbane. I love Harvey Bay, so... Are you getting a boat, Jess? Oh, it's tempting. Harvey Bay's such a fun spot to sail. So it's a yes. <laughs> what well, 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 colour would you like? I could be tempted. Would you buy any, me one? Yeah. Sail me no sponsors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll get you one. <laughs> if, if, uh, if anyone wants, they can contact, contact uh, <laughs> Sail Media Sports Management. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll get you the, the right price for whatever you like, Jess. So. Thank you, thank you. Those uh, drone shots down the harbour pretty much makes it feel like uh, we own this part of the harbour. Yeah. <laughs> Spectacular shots. So on screen there we've got Moonen um, leading with Imi and the orange kite and Fireball still holding on with a close third. Did Nathan jump back and hit out? Yeah, he did too. Nathan, Nathan went the opposite way. Yeah, so imagine signage for the only boat that seems to have jived off early. I think they're just having a victory lap today and enjoying themselves on their last race, proper race together for the season. Um, red pumps coming nice and close into these cliffs here, trying to take every little bit of pressure that they can. It's not as lumpy as it usually is. Sometimes this close in on North Head, you get the backwash and it's really lumpy and not nice to be here. But today, 
um, they're riding these waves in nicely. There's a lot of times when you're heading this way, isn't it, Jess, and you go, yep. okay, jibe, don't, don't jibe, no. jibe, don't jibe, like, <laughs> like which you've one is it? got like... the sheet hand yelling at you, come on, you've got to go, and no, we can't. And Imey is right yeah, on the hammer right of the moon. rolling over, maybe, even. Wow. Yeah, I know I've said this on live stream before, but lots of people get around the top mark and think it's time to relax, but absolutely not. You can make some really good gains downwind. Um, a lot of it's in the forehand hand downwind, trimming the kite, running forward and running backwards on the wire to catch the waves. Um, yeah, and I'm sure that's what Imi, Moonen and all these top boats are doing at the moment. Yeah, we do have our middle harbour, 16 foot skiffs having a race today as well. So some of these boats in the background you might see are not part of the Manly race. Um, but they do have some nice competition at middle harbour. And of course we race against them at states and nationals. And I think we've got a really friendly relationship with that club. Definitely. I think we have a pretty uh, good relationship with just about all the clubs now, don't we, Rolf? It's, uh... I can't think of a club we don't have a good relationship with. There you go. There's a Botany Access on screen of having one of their better races. Yeah, a good example of how Sheet Hand is crouching in but still keeping their weight on the wire. Um, Forehand Hand is moving forward and trimming the kite on each wave. We've got a bit of a ferry wash that they'll have to navigate their way through now. We should be kind of head to head with the 13s soon, shouldn't we? Shouldn't be far off the 13s and what we might do is we might, there they are just over here, we will duck over and quickly have a look at what's going on over with the 13s while the 16s head on down to the bottom arc. There's Harkin on screen who... Oh yeah, we're looking for Evix to see how they're all faced off, aren't we? Yeah, so Harkin... Right behind us, are... yeah. Okay, so they're looking alright. Yeah, Harkin are currently leading the series. Um, I think they've got three points. Um, I had a look at the results. Harkin have three wins in the series and Evix have one win in the series, which means that if they tie, Harkin will win on count back. So if my calculations are correct, if Evix win today, Harkin need to get fifth or worse for Evix to win overall. I'm glad you're here today, so, Jess. Yeah, Harkin just need to get top four today to ensure that they win overall. And they really look like that's where they're at. They're, um... Well, Harkin's gone up the same side. The, the, the better the 16s have got the better outcome went. And you've got yeah. Evix is probably uh, closer over to middle head. You can't see it on the screen, but they're probably reasonably similar to the splits the 16s did. But you'd have to say Harkin's going the right way at the moment. There's the uh, young crew aboard the Modern Concept Constructions. 13 foot skiff. Go that way if you need. Super close at the top end of our 16 foot skiffs on screen now. Um, they are coming into our gate mark, so for Which those who don't know. Hand? Yeah. <laughs> for those who don't know, we have two marks at the bottom, and sailors choose which one to go around. There's Evix there on screen, so they're making their way up to the top, but we'll uh, find it easier to come across them, Rolf, when we're going back yep. up with these guys. No worries. The uh, 13s are under oh, spinning. Is that Ivy's kind of the win? No, they just had them. So close again, close again. Those two guys are uh, going to duel it out, I think. Now, these are middle harbour boats coming in on my left, so we don't count them, do we? You can if you want, Rolf. I, but, used, to, uh, I used to, because they're the only ones I was in front of all day. But... Uh, it makes you, makes you feel better when you're leading a race and you count 16 boats between you and your next competitor. So here we have the... Fireball um, deciding to jibe drop. Um, interesting choice, I think, but I think they might jibe back around this mark and head out the same way as the others. And they've got a spinnaker shoot yeah, on board that boat. Yeah, they do a shoot, so. so it seems like it might have been easier for them to drop on that side, potentially. Really good downwind for these boys. They've managed to um, keep up with the top two. 
and seems like they've put a bit of distance oh, right, on fourth. And Botany Access in fourth. And interestingly, just to the left of screen, <laughs> Imagine Signage <laughs> were the hosting. only boat to jive out to the other side of the course at the top, and they have made some big gains on this downwind. I'll watch this here with the Botany Access a bit, a bit loose. Ooh. Everyone look away. Didn't give their forehead hand much time to get that kite down, but doing a good job. So that's about a uh, 10 boat gain to Nathan, I'd say, down that run. Yeah, absolutely. Just not they're just out for a victory lap, are they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're after the victory. Full sail racing is going to come in hot from the left of the screen in a few seconds, so that they'll, they'll uh, make life interesting. But uh... Yeah, now this will be good to watch because it seems like Nathan on Imagine Signage is heading out to the right side of the course, which is where he came down, went and made big gains. The others are still going out to the left. Um, Nathan, as we know, and Mal and Brett on board are very talented sailors and they sometimes see things we don't. So we'll see how it plays out at the top mark. Do we know if they're at full strength today? I crew? don't think they're at full strength because I'm assuming, well, if Matt Stenner's away with hooligan commitments, means Mal Page would be away yep. with hooligan commitments. And yep. I don't think the bloke, the, on, the, the bloke on the sheet is, is way too athletic to be Brett Davis, so it can't be <laughs> can't be the silver fox. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's not Brett. Here comes the, the absolute athlete on Typhoon. Hey, last year's Australian champion boat. Boat. <laughs> Campaign manager. G'day to Russell and Sonia, who were the original Typhoon sponsors, for the, the Boyle family. So, now Russell and Sonia tune in occasionally to watch us in between all of the things that Russell's got going on these days. Yeah, definitely a, a big supporter of the club and the class and the, the specific boat itself. Um, remember many a many a away regatta with the. The two of them there cheering everyone on, especially the Typhoon would, would win a few more races back in those days. And that boat there on screen, the fluid, the normal skipper of that, Clint Bowen, he, um, he's doing another tour de cure signature ride from Tassie to South Australia somehow. I don't know how you pedal on water, but um, <laughs> he's um, got a little thing to check up on screen of how to... to to donate to the cause for the Tour de Cure. This is his, um, I think, 10th or 11th year. Um, you know, he got stuck into it for a, a very close reason to all of us at Manly Skiff Club um, with Adam Barraclough. Uh, Ralphie, you probably best to speak on Well, yeah, it's, uh, it's, 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 we've got a bit of a, uh, a 10 year, it's 10 years in uh, September this year since, since Bart passed on. So the work Clint does with the uh, the rest of those guys that do the bike rides to all sorts of far-fung places and raise raise good money to hopefully one day end the, the scourge that cancer is. I don't think there'd be too many people, if anyone that hasn't got a touch of cancer from somebody in their family or their friendship group, it's uh, it's widespread and we've got to knock it on the head. So Clint's doing amazing work and uh, if you can get on there and throw some money in his tin, then please do. Yeah, Bozo's raised a phenomenal amount of money, or Clint Bowen has raised a phenomenal amount of money for the uh, Tour de Cure, and I think it's, uh, you know, he just keeps on turning around and doing it again and doing it again, so it's, uh, it's good to see that he's very passionate about trying to help them find a cure for A, cancer. going to make our way up the course now to see how our 13s are getting on.
So while we're driving up the up the hill, so to speak, we've got uh, what, one more week, and then the season's all over. It doesn't even feel like we've started. It uh, goes very quick when you're not in the actual boat. Yeah, starting. absolutely. Yeah, I know we've mentioned swap day already, but swap day um, is something when I was in juniors, I sailed at swap day. I think my most memorable moment was sailing with Ruffy, um, who's on Moon and Yachts now. And they said, oh, do you steer a Flying 11? And I said, yeah, it's my first year steering a Flying 11. And they let me have a go steering. Good, yeah. the, yes, it's steering a 16. Um, and they were so encouraging and so lovely to me. And they were pumping me up and saying the boat was really flat and fast. And it made me feel super excited to sail a 16 so then when I got to race against him all those years later um, it's a pretty cool feeling so for those kids who are going to sail next week um, yeah be keen for a good day and it could be the start of something really cool yeah I remember taking out a, a young Matt Stenter that was sailing yep. flying 11s and now I look at him and just go you, you weren't the same kid like there's no yeah. way <laughs> So Fluid, the 13, which is in front of us, is the third place boat by my little uh, piece of paper. And uh, yep. if there was to be disaster with the front two boats, they could still technically snatch the title, but highly unlikely. Yeah, I'm thinking where they're looking at the moment, I know they probably prefer the stronger breezes. Um, Liam on sheet is maybe one of our stronger and heavier crews out there, so the lighter breezes can be a bit more frustrating for them. And I know Big, big Don, Big Don's a bit of a... Uh, a big rugby player too, so he's probably a couple more kilos than many of the other guys and girls out there. So there's the Cybertech group on the screen, yeah, which is so, Ash, uh, Ash and uh, KB Napper, the, the Napper pairing, just getting lamped on by the Ronston there. Parking on screen there seem to be having a really good first work. Um, as far as I can tell, there'll be a it's gonna close, be close. It's gonna very be close. close first and second between Harkin, who are out on the left side of the course, and Evix off screen, who seem to have gone out to the right, potentially almost on the it's lay really line. Really close. It's uh, fitting of a uh, grand final kind of race. Yeah, absolutely. Now, with Harkin a few points of in front, they do just need to finish in the top four to guarantee a win, um, but Ebix will be doing everything they can to win this one. Yeah, Ebix needs to drag a few boats with them though to get through in front yeah, of Harkin and today's not the day for it. Well we just saw Nathan do some magic with his boat so it's lots lots of uh, sailing still to come in this race. Yeah it does definitely seem like left or right will work for you as long as you commit and yeah, pick, pick a side. Uh, we can see Gemma there was sitting well into the boat um, now move back up again with a bit more breeze just to make sure that James on sheet is staying out on the wire at all times. And it's Orlando's first year in the 13s as well, isn't it? Yes, it's his first Harkin. full season. He did do a few fill-ins. I know he sailed with us on the 16 once um, last season and he sailed on the 13 a few times, but his first full season. Um, I think he came through the 29ers, so he has had some experience on wire and he's definitely a very talented sailor. I guess you don't uh, put yourself in a position of winning a club championship if you've uh, got no idea. So yeah. <laughs> definitely doing well. They've, they've got the jump there. They pull out 50 metres, I think, on a net bike coming out of here. Something interesting with Orlando, he seemed to have always been against wearing boots, but I think he's got boots on at the moment. So maybe we've convinced him that boots will stop you slipping around on the wire. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's like if you're the, the guys, particularly, I think, from Belmont, that wear the short wetsuits. Oh, uh, the wetsuit yeah. shorts are then yeah. barefooted? Yeah, and I'm just like, oh, like, the amount of wetsuits we used to go through being torn to pieces. Yep. Harkin.
Kraken seems to be lifting out a few degrees higher as well, I think. So. Yeah, I was wondering to see if they would go to the lay or put a loose cover on Ebix, and it seems like they're choosing to put a loose cover on. So Which we'll is have... probably a smart play, I guess, if yeah. they're, uh, they don't need to beat them by only one. They've got it covered if they're only going to get fourth, did you say? Is it enough? Or... Yeah, fourth will be enough if Ebix win, and they'll win on count back if they tie. I assume that'll be directly in line with each other, sending some lovely swirl there back from Harkin onto Evix. It's called aero wash if, uh, if you watch the 18s. <laughs> Ralphie with uh, Bucko, it's what it's called, aero wash. Ah, Bucko with the aero wash, of course. Yes, our, our, our aeronautical expert, Bucko. I thought that was when they hosed the plane. <laughs> Right, so they've just tacked on lay to the top mark. I'm anticipating they'll head downwind the same way our 16s did over to North Head. Keep it simple, keep the jibes at a, at a minimum. Or did they see Nathan? Potentially. <laughs> be a bold move from the lead though. <laughs> Harkins has got to do the smart thing, right? And let Ebix dictate where they go for the day and just stay between them and the next mark. Yep. Craig Nichols, did you hear that? <laughs> oh, a bit, bit sloppy, a bit sloppy on the Ebix, but uh, upright is good. Wow, standing high on the wire there. Just standing on the gun, oh, mate. I think on. You and I couldn't do that. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Lots of things you and I couldn't do, Jimmy. Next round is Buck and Simple. And that's the Sale Media, is it right? Yeah, 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 I've yeah, seen that somewhere before. The fourth <laughs> place, the Sale Media. Yeah, and a bit of a gap to fifth, so it seems like tight for first and second and tight for third and fourth. So how's your boat there, Jimmy, doing overall on the, uh, the, the club champ? Or did I throw the question at you without notice? Threw it to me without notice, but I'll, I'll have a stab in the dark. So media is racing at number eight at the moment overall. I was just about to say eight, and I reckon they're probably on about 58 points. Oh, magical work, but eights is good for... Uh... They got the bait late this year, and um, they had a sponsor lined up, and the sponsor pulled out, and Daryl came to me and said, hey, can we... I'm just all you want, want you to do is brand the boat, so we did that and got Scotty onto the job from Imagine Signage and voila. I do, I do love the fact that talking about the boat in eighth place and we're talking about a boat that's in the midfield. It wasn't too long ago where the numbers got quite low and uh, this is pretty exciting that eighth place has still got a lot of boats behind it. Yeah, yeah. and good competition in the midfield as well. Yeah, this is good racing. Isn't it? He's two of the smiliest kids you ever see, Sophie and Bella aboard the Botany Scaffold. <sighs> They even smile. I remember going out at St George. I think it was heat one or maybe the invite race and the rudder pin or something. They either dropped it or couldn't find it or it fell out. They still kept smiling. Yeah. I don't know if, uh, if Zanny and, uh, and Dole were smiling. They were running around looking for rudder pins because I think it might have gone missing. But those two just kept smiling and smiling and smiling. Next around will be Ronston. Zach and Charlie. Yeah, I had a chance to be out on one of our support boats volunteering with Charlie's dad um, a few weeks ago. And, yeah, it's great to see that with our 13-foot skiffs, we have some really, really involved parents. So before Bella, um, her dad, Dolly Davolo, has done a lot with the club. Um, so it's really good to see that the parents still get really involved with their kids. And for the viewers at home, that wasn't the Bartley 16, that was the Bartley 13 and the... Modern Concept Construction 13, so you know, got a few sponsors that double up and sponsor both the 13 and 16 foot skiff, which is great to see and always helps out the younger teams to uh, fill that gap to be able to afford the boat. And um, you know, on top of the incredible incentives and 
advance a prize money and so forth that the Manly Skiff Club offers. Yeah, on screen there we've got our 16s, which are right in the mix, um, coming up to our top marks. So it looks like Moonen are still leading with Imi very close behind. And it looks like off behind them, Fireball is still holding on to their third position. So I think that's a really good shot there. We can see the differences between our 13-foot skiffs and 16-foot skiffs. Um, our 16-foot skiffs, obviously, with much bigger kite, will run lower downwind. This will be interesting. A bit of a bit of traffic for them to negotiate. Yeah. So the windward boats, so the boats to the right in this case, do have to keep clear. Like one of our 13s has capsized to windward. Easy to do on a day like today if you get rolled by a boat over the top of you and you're not ready for it, you suddenly lose all your wind and capsize to windward. Um, our boats behind them are going to have to make sure they keep clear. Ruffy's pushing up, I think, looking at that, trying to get over those 13 so he doesn't risk falling into a hole and uh, yep. getting gobbled up. And Imi's going to go the other way and go the low road. Yeah. Next around is. Fireball oh. back here at the top mark. What a day oh. out for these young blokes. Yeah, absolutely. They're not far behind, are they? They're doing well. Great day. And they don't have quite as much traffic to try and push through, so they might mm. get another 10, 15 seconds gain on those guys from that. Oh, well, Imi just went left, turned left. Yeah, in a really good line there. Hopefully Rob's not passing off too many of the trade secrets of how this swell and so forth works to young Joel because Joel will take that in very well and uh, the Belmont teams will come down here and learn how to master the, the art of sailing in this seaway out here. Yeah, on screen there, a bit of a gap to fourth sail racing and fifth imagine signage. So it is this was, this was always the fun course, wasn't it, Jimmy, to, to come up against the Belmont guys, head out here outside the heads, and a couple of them, I think, had a, a white look on their face as they jumped over a few of the waves they've uh, had to negotiate. Big Wednesday comes to mind during the Nationals. Ooh, that was a good day. A few, was a good day. Many, or so a few years ago, many moons ago. Um, <clears throat> yeah, they were white as a ghost when they came back to the club, that's for sure. They... They're like, how do you bear away out there? And it's like, oh, it's easy. So I remember the first time we had to bear away out here. I was like, I think I still remember going past the four state a million miles an hour. It's definitely so, a steep learning curve, that's for sure. So Star Racing's taken over Imagine, haven't they? They were the other way around at the bottom mark, I think. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, I think uh, so. Pumps Imagine and Sail Racing there on the screen. And that 13 foot skiff that went over is the Magic Marine 13 foot skiff. I reckon they're going, oh, he's, yep, yep, oh. Nice save. So, Sail Racing looks like they might have just jumped into their groove a little bit, maybe, and. Uh... Yeah, it seems like they've come around this top mark in a really nice um, gust. They're pointing a lot lower than the others, so they're getting a good advantage, getting themselves closer to the bottom mark. Do you reckon they'd fancy himself from there, Jess, to close the gap at least to Fireball and then set sights on the IME and Moon and that those two only have eyes for each other to try and yeah. win the last heat, right? I mean, we're only around the top mark for the second time out of four, so there's still a lot of racing to go. 
and in these conditions, um, anything can happen if you're picking the right shifts. I think they're coming down in more pressure than uh, the guys went down before them, I think. Yeah, De absolutely. Definitely lower, right? Nathan's done a Nathan and gone the other way. So you should lead by a couple of minutes at the bottom. <laughs> yeah, he's gone back over towards uh, middle head, so it'll be interesting to see if he can do it twice. Yeah, so Imi choosing to go lower, um, have managed to get in front of Moonen by the looks of it. Um, although it's very tight, hard to see on camera there, but Moonen is a fair bit deeper than Imi. So just, I'll just work something out in my head. Here we go. No, this is actually this is actually a good one, Jess. Yeah. Yeah, I'll put Rolf, the on. Rolf, you were the race secretary. <laughs> Maybe. Manly skipper. Okay, so we're in the I 90s. was the race secretary. You were? Jess was the race secretary, correct? No, no you were the, no, you were the boss commodore. Commodore. She went straight to the top, mate. <laughs> straight to the top. <laughs> you, had a, you had the hard one with, with Grant, wasn't it? He was the Commodore and Grant was the way so much. Jess basically yeah. was the, uh, the surrogant... Uh, Commodore that we had to call upon all the time. <laughs> Did an excellent job too. So are we halfway through the race at the bottom mark this time? Yes. On. yes. So we've got uh, some pretty tight racing after half a race where uh, pretty much neck and neck again. So. They do trim the boat well, don't they? Absolutely. Good shot there. That kite is not being held on at all. It's constantly moving, um, trying to squeeze everything out of it. Generally speaking, we want that front panel of the spinner car rolling. Uh, that's how you know that it's trimmed properly. is one of those sports I often get people asking me um, oh what do you commentate on and I'm like there's so much to sailing but it's one of those things that if you don't grow up knowing much about it you just think that you're just sitting on the side of the boat um, having a day out on the harbour but these guys are working very very hard I think that's the difference between these guys and the uh, 30 minutes behind boats is the yep. just sitting around having a day on the harbour versus yep. working very hard. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> if the cricket commentators can get a five day uh, commentary out of it, I think yeah. um, there's plenty in two hours to, to talk about if we want it. On screen there we have Cybertech Group and Bartley Construction 13 foot skips. Joust now there. Lovely shot from the drone there of Imi. I think if we tied those two together down this run with a bit of string, it wouldn't have broken. They've been pretty much the same same distance and yeah, I think so. Pace apart from each other. So and just to note, in the 13 foot skiffs, you've got Harkin have they've taken the, the left bottom mark and heading out to um, middle head, and Ebex is heading towards Grotto Point. Yeah, very interesting call from Harkin on screen there to separate from Evix. Um, yeah, we'll see how this goes at the top mark. It's always a risk separating yourself from your competition.
I can see at the bottom mark we have a change of top mark um, with a minus sign. So that means our top mark has been brought closer. There we go. Yeah, it doesn't seem like it has moved left or right any, so no change in wind direction, but making the top mark closer, which means we'll still get our four laps in, but slightly shorter legs, so we will finish in our target time of an hour and a half for the first boat. I think they found the whistle. Yeah, so sailors do need to know what all of this means. There's a blue, white and red um, flag with a minus sign and a whistle to alert them what's going on. And there's also a new top mark, which will be a pink mark with a black band. Imi's got a little, little gust right at the wrong time there as they come in. But they're going to uh, probably power right up to the back of Moon and who goes in slowly. Again, they're really close together. This is uh, shaping up to be a match race. Yes. Nathan wasn't able to pull off the same, uh, same one as last time. I can't see Nathan, but... No, uh, he's a fair bit behind this time which has me slightly worried for Harkin in our 13-foot skiffs who have chosen to go out that side of the course. Sour Racing on screen there, who looks like they're in fourth position. It seems as though Fireball have hold, held on to their third. And Cybertech Group in our 13-foot skiffs. Do all the 13s have got shoots? There's not a, not a 13 without a shoot, is there? They've got to do the shoot. Correct. Yeah, so... <clears throat> Daryl was saying, when I was talking to Daryl Mellon, the, uh, the forward hand on board the, um, the SAR Media boat, he was saying that that's one thing that he'd like to see as an option in the 13s is to have a spinnaker bag because he said a lot of the young kids that come through and are stepping up into the 16s... I haven't used one before. Haven't you know, don't understand the complexity of trying to stuff a spinnaker in a bag and how big the, the bag is. Yep, it's definitely very different. I um, think the advantage of having the chute in 13-foot skiff in particular is with only two people in the boat, um, being able to keep their body weight further back for a windier day and it's a bit smoother and faster to get it in as long as everything's working properly. Yeah, and that was one of the problems Craig had on one of the typhoons when he had to have the spinnaker shoot when he got Jay Harris on board. It was like prawn central every week. So the next boat mm. that Craig built, one of his 300 typhoons that he built, um, <clears throat> he put a spinnaker shoot in it to keep Jay there because he knew Jay could do that. Yeah. But we didn't get it right that year. We had not quite the right lengths inside things and it just didn't quite work. So didn't get the advantage we were hoping for. So on screen there we have Imagine Signage, um, who definitely have dropped back a fair bit on that downwind. But as we know, they've already won the series, so good on them for trying something different. Looks like both red pumps have got in front of them there, Jess. Yeah. And the Imagine Signage almost, almost, almost swam on think, a jibe. I think they are doing the uh, celebration victory lap. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know who Nathan has on today. Yeah, and that is just something to show, I mean, how quickly things can change in this race if you make a bad decision. So even though we're two laps in, a lot can change in the next two laps. Which um, is, it's pretty cool to, to know that yeah. you know, you, you're up against a, a mind of someone like Nathan Wilmot. Yep. Olympic decision maker, gold medalist, and you're picking it better than him, that would definitely yeah. make you feel good. Absolutely. You'd happily finish the season on that, wouldn't you? Yeah. <laughs> Fireball on screen there, currently in third position. What, what handicap does Fireball sail off? Good question, Ralph. I'm looking it up, I'm going to see, because I reckon they're doing all right. Does it tell me on this bit of paper? doesn't tell me. I think Fireball will definitely be in a good running if they can hold this position to win handicap today. Apologies for bringing that up and not having the right information, but it just looks like they're doing really well to me. They are definitely doing very well. And there's uh, the Ashman sitting in the boat with Kobe 
in and out, in and out with the uh, what's now become the red glove. If you're a nappy, you wear red gloves. So it's sort of become a bit of a trademark for them. Ash is almost looking a bit too comfortable there. He, he, always, he always looks <laughs> way relaxed, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> He's just too cool, isn't he? <laughs> Yeah, I don't think too much phase is in, uh, being the, the youngest of four. Yeah, Botany Scaffold, Sophie and Bella on screen there. So both Bella and Sophie were sitting their HSC exams this year, so they're sailing potentially maybe wasn't their priority for this season, but it's great to see that they're still getting out there. And uh, I think during the week, Sophie turned 18. Ah, oh, happy birthday, Sophie. We better put a few drinks on after the race. You're the president. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then. They're probably still smiling, too, all the way through the HSC and, and sailing, I imagine. They probably smiled in the exams. <laughs> so... I'm up higher than the moon in here by about 50 odd feet. Mm. This is going to be probably a, uh, a takeover. Takeover bid. I think the bid's in. It's <laughs> going to be tight. They might need to leave out or go further in for a bigger lift. But I oh know there's a spade to da uh, Daniel Turner's uh, face there. Yeah, That's got to be on me. There I they go. do have the advantage being on starboard. Now, if that was the key cup, they would have kept up international relations with some communication. <laughs> <laughs> Just trying to find where the, the Hark and Ebix battle continues, because, you know, as we said, the uh, early on in the piece, uh, the, uh, the uh, 16, no, they said 18, foot, the, the uh, 16 foot skiff club championship here at Manly has been wrapped up by the imaginate signage. Both the uh, Imi and Moonen are uh, trying to, I guess, finish the season both with a high. So um, both of them haven't had the club championship to start with. The Moonen boys, by memory, swam in the first two heats of the yeah, clubby, they did. and uh, it was all uphill from there for, for Dan and the boys. And I think the Imi was late on the water by memory. Um, <clears throat> few problems with that boat. But Moon and they're really just uh, just racing the sail racing boys, aren't they? Yeah, that's, they that's, are. That's their day today, isn't it? I can see off down in the distance there. It seems like sail racing have gone out to the right side of the course this time. So we'll see what happens uh, with them at the top mark. And what's their worst drop, Rolf, for both of them? Sorry, oh, mate. I know you just put yep. it all the way. No, it's OK. So we've got uh, Sail Racing is dropping 23 points there in race 6 and Moonen's dropping 10. So, so Sail Racing can't afford to get Sail backwards. Well, one point difference between you know, so them. So you'd, you'd probably suggest, though, for, for Rafi, without being him being arrogant, he's probably, you know, he's won the championship before. So uh, second place is uh, second or third is second or third. And he's probably having more fun beating Rob Napper. Yeah, he's um, he's had he's had plenty of bridesmaids dresses over the years. Or <laughs> that's what we call getting second place is uh, bridesmaids. So um, as as did uh, up there. as did Rob on the back, especially when he was on the fire stopping. I managed to give him that many second places that. Uh, I think that's why he moved me on. Got you a couple of firsts too, Jimmy. So I might just head up to the top mark now. Now remember our top mark has been brought in closer than where it was last time. Our 13s are making their way to the top. As far as I can see, Harkins seem to have extended a lead. Yeah, I think Harkin's got the lead. On Ebix. So it seems like boat speed wise, Ebix and Harkin are pretty well matched boat speed. Um, so Harkin must have made some really good tactics up this leg to extend their lead. 
Um, they've just tacked on Lee to the top mark. This is top mark for the second time out of three for our 13 foot skips. So they've still got two more laps to go. Well, they definitely went the right way on that one. Yeah, absolutely. Well done. I'd say Ebix is a good three to four minutes behind, maybe. Never been good with messages. You jump in here with all your accurate yeah. uh, numbers whenever you're ready, but that's, that's a lot bigger lead than last time is as far as yeah, I'll go. Yeah, absolutely. I know Orlando has said about Heidi that she's really good at calling tactics. So well done. To it's them. interesting, isn't it? They, they both went the opposite way up the first one and then they switched over. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe they both felt the other one did better. But... Me on screen there, who are currently leading our 16 foot skips. It'll be tight with Imi and, uh, and Moon. Yeah, Moon, absolutely. Moon and squeezing up on him a little bit. He'll come into picture soon, but I think it's going to be quite tight. Yeah, there they are in the picture there, squeezing right up on Imi and jumping up into their lane almost. And if they can execute a quick one and get round, here we go. Yeah, well done, well. Oh, all change again. Yeah, so this close at the top, they're going to be putting a lot of pressure to get that kite up and set as fast as possible. Moonan said to go windward. Windward set of the kite coming out on the mm -hmm. other side of the jib to what they would probably prefer, but looking a little bit messy. Imi's clean though. Oh, a little bit of wobble. Here comes Imi, straight back over, all change again. Yeah, so Imi will be able to go over the top, steal their wind. Ooh, maybe just too late. Now, Imi need to keep there. clear here, so Moonan tried to push them up, but um, yeah, Imi got over in front. And we've got Evix on screen going round in third position. So oh, Sail Media wow. have managed to squeeze in between Harkin and Evix. We can see Harkin with their kite off in the distance there, already jibed down to the bottom. That is a comfortable lead. It is, but look, they've <laughs> made that much gain in, in one, one work. work so they, again, they? Absolutely. <laughs> I think if I was Harkin at this point, I'd be sailing where I think I need to go because they know they've made some good decisions, but also keeping an eye behind me and making sure I'm not separating myself too much from my competition. And Moonan now would have about two, two, three minutes on sail racing, so they're probably going to put second to bed. Yeah, I'd say this so. This keeps going, but again, as you say, one leg's one leg and things can change, but... Yeah, so Fireball's still doing a really good job holding their own in third position, but sail racing are very close behind them. Oh, little drop of the main there. You're never guilty of that, Rolfie? No, no. <laughs> no, neither was I. When I let the rope go, Craig never caught the boom quick enough. <laughs> it's always the skipper's fault, isn't it? <laughs> well, unfortunately not on Typhoon, it wasn't. <laughs> Depends who's listening. <laughs> Jay Harris is the go-to. <laughs> <laughs> Red pumps nicely around. Harkins are literally in a different postcode. They are yeah. they are gone in the 13 foot skiffs. The um Baby Botany Axis around nicely. Yeah, I think we're up to fourth position, Botany Axis in our 13 foot skiffs and red pumps on screen there in fifth position for our sixteens. 
So how many uh, legendary sponsors have we got that are doing the double double boat campaign? We've got the the, the botany, we've got the, the fluid, we've got the I've seen Bartley, we've Bartley. got um, well red pumps have two sixteen. I think they're twelve boats, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> uh, modern modern concepts. Modern concepts, yep. Uh, some some fantastic support. Yeah, and it's good now, to now see. Now I need to check. I haven't missed anybody. I've just said those names. So. Yeah, and it's nice for our thirteens to have a good mentorship with the sixteens as well. Definitely. So we have Imagine signage, as we know. On that last downwind, they dropped back a few places. So we're not talking about the Cunninghams. Do we know are they getting a new boat? Is that the plan, or is it? It's, seems like they're taking a break next season. That's a shame. As long as they come back, though. As long as they come back. Yeah. I mean, I know I started sailing in Manly Juniors around the same time as Nick did, and doing it every season. How competitively can wear you out? So sometimes it's nice to take a year off realise how much you miss it and want to get back into it. And that's where you sit right now, you've got the bug again. <laughs> There's a theme I'm going with here. Yeah. <laughs> the big V, the Bartley Constructions. Top of screen there, those two red kites, it seems like Fireball um, went considerably further before jiving compared to the others. So we'll see how that plays out for them, but unfortunately it might look like they've lost their third spot, just going too far. Um, keeping an eye on that bottom mark, they may have overlaid it, or potentially they've chosen a really good lay and they'll come in nicely underneath the others. Still, so many angle changes, isn't there? Just yeah, absolutely. Thirty seconds later, it's all changes again. And... Yeah, and every single wave, you want to take the advantage out of that and really drive your boat down as you're riding the waves. And there's a cross between. Yeah, there's a cross. Still there. Okay, so yeah, well done to Fireball. Um, driving can be slow, so minimal jibes. If you think you're in a good line, um, is often worth it. Now, 13 foot skips, Harkin have just rounded the bottom mark, so they have one more lap to go. And our 16s will also have one more lap to go. I always used to hate when you're out in front like Harkin is at the moment, and you're, you're sort of going, okay, we've got, sort of got this wrapped up, and you, you don't want to take the. Um, the foot off the the, the, the accelerator and yep. you just every little creak or crane that happens in the boat you're like what's that what's that like yeah, open yep, it and yep. not gonna all fall apart yeah Amy's just gone round in currently leading the 16 foot skiffs and there's been an on screen there in second position as funny as it sounds that's probably the biggest lead they've had yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and don't forget, Imi had a, a swim up the first. They did too. Yeah, I have so, forgotten yeah. about that. Wow. And Fireball on screen with Bartley behind. So I reckon Ebix is still three to four minutes away from rounding the bottom mark. So Harkins making every post a winner. Great ley line there for Fireball onto this mark.
really clean drop and yeah, right straight in, around yeah, the mark. mark. Yep, so they do have a shoot, which means they similar setup to our 13-foot skiffs. They don't have to pack it into a bag. It pulls with a rope down into the boat for them. And sail racing not too far behind. They are packing into a bag, so you can see the difference um, between a bag and a chute. While we're talking about packing spinnakers, we, do, we should do a shout out to uh, Peter Hubble. He normally uh, watches these events and usually has a comeback plan by the end of each race, I think. He's got a comeback plan to a comeback plan. <laughs> I must admit I was surprised I didn't see him pop into a boat for the uh, St George Nationals. I thought he might have snuck into something. I think people have wised up to Hubble. <laughs> Hi Pete if you're watching. <laughs> Here's Evix on screen now in second position for our 13 foot skiffs. So they managed to sneak back in front of Sail Media. Just seeing James stopping on the centre board, get it down as they round the mark. And for the viewers at home, Jess, centre board, why, why would they have pulled that up a bit coming downwind? Is that... Yeah, you just don't really need it downwind. Um, so any drag in the boat, try and get rid of it. Um, boats will also pull their board up in when the wind starts picking up a bit stronger going upwind. Um, you just don't want the wind and the sails and the centre board fighting against each other. Um, so you pull a bit up and you're going fast enough that you won't go sideways um, as much with the tide and waves. There you go for all the, the young ones coming through. A bit of how to. Yeah, some you guys might not know even with the big big rig in our 16s we'll still most of the time put the small board in um, you just don't need that much board in the water did I see at one stage some of the boats were putting mechanisms in to be able to raise and drop the centre board from yeah. the rope without actually doing the jumping and the, the lifting yeah so I had a chance to sail on southerly I think in the um, round the harbour race and they have that mechanism in their boat and that's the boat that won the nationals it's a fairly good uh, um, case for it being good yeah did you find it good? I've never sailed on something like that. Was it? Yeah, it was pretty good. I mean, it's a pain to have someone jump in the boat to pull it up and push it down, and sometimes they're jammed in real tight that once it's in, you can't move it. So having a system in place to move it around is really good, and well done to Matt Triglone, um, who put some real effort in to get that working on his boat. Did Matt come up with it? Like no, I, it was... think, I think Jared Smith was yeah, okay. behind it all. That's why I was just having a look at yeah. the botany going past, because... Yeah seem to remember it being on that. I know it's definitely on Jared's boat being the modern concept constructions. Okay. And there's the botany access going into the bottom mark. Hot, hot, hot. Yeah, real tight racing in the middle of this fleet. Is that big Dave Burkett in the fluid going around the mark there? Nice work. There's the best looking boat out here, the fire stopping. Yeah, well that's them taking an opportunity and sneaking around inside. What does what they want to do, Jimmy? They look like they've got some great colours and a great sign. <laughs> Whatever they do, I'd like to buy some. The passive fire separation works is what we do. So. Oh, we all need some of that. Yeah, absolutely. So. We've got Harkin on screen there. It looks like they've gone the same upwind as they did last time. So they've taken a bit of a dig out to the right and then sailing up to North Head. They're probably just a little over halfway up this up this last work and yeah, that was fluid that went past, fluid 13 that just went past in the background. So yeah, gives you an idea of how much of a lead they've got. Yep. It's pretty cool to see our top 13s and our top 16s all sailing in the same general area. Um, so we've got Harkin here just crossing in front of Ivy. See Trent on the side there constantly stretching and bending his knees just to get his body position right um, over each wave.
to see there on Joel's arm. He's got Andu, so he's part of the Andu team for the uh, the Andu Team X, which is, is sponsored by them. Um, Herman winning. Got a couple of Andus and they had the, the Comanche renamed Andu Comanche as well, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. Well, Joel obviously in the 29ers, so he or okay, yeah, was cool. in the 29ers and Herman winning. Fantastic. Um, you know, took him under his wing and doing a great job. Definitely. Biggest fear I've got for Joel is the amount of pressure getting put on him by everyone. And, you know, like the, Adam, his father's quite good at managing that. I'm going to say, he's, he's probably got some, uh, some good words around him at times when he needs them. Yeah. So I know at the moment we've got Graham and a few of the uh, people like Luca and, and some of the Belmont gang working together on uh, coming up with some some sources of uh, new skiffs for hopefully this fleet of 13 sailors in a couple of years. We'll have a whole bunch of boats available for them. They all look like they'd probably jump straight into a top skiff and be uh, probably in this position here with Imi and uh, Moon and without too much trouble, I reckon they're that good. Yeah, it's, um, you know, the, the Manly and St George Club's doing amazing things at the moment with uh, with subsidies and so forth. Rolf, like you're the you're the president. I know I, I sit there, but um, well, as you as you know, Jimmy, it's uh, it, it, it's been um, been quite successful this year with the, the subsidies being available to, to to the classes below the 16 as well. I mean, even the, even a few of the junior boats. Uh, Got helped out in the 13s, obviously, as well. So we're looking to put together the budget now for next season and continue that theme. Um, both clubs, Manly and St George, are trading successfully. So, and uh, we've we've extinguished the the loan that we we took to to fund the, the St George balance. So we're looking forward to ramping up the stuff we can do for sailing. It's always the way, though. Over the last 30 odd years, I've, I've seen we've either had heaps of people and no boats, or heaps of boats and no money, or heaps of money and no people. We're just going to try and get the all of them at the same time. But lots of work being done on it. Yeah, and it's it is like it is great to see. Like you know, as, as you alluded to, Ralph, like you know, when we extended it to the junior classes as well. You know, I thought that was really good. Like you know, we're definitely taking our pathway seriously and going from there and as you said it'd be great to see the the likes of you know like Heidi's only geez like she's only tiny like you know maybe a couple more years in the 13s but let's have a 16 ready for her that's for sure yeah in a couple of years time we'll uh, we'll definitely be there what do you know these uh, these two here and uh... just getting word through Rolf, that there's five flying 11s to, scheduled to be built for next season for just for oh, through our cool, cool. things. So I know, I know. There's been some uh, some some work done chasing it where we we're going to get them going. So that's good news again. Having, having 17, 13 is like I've said a couple of times now today, and I'm a broken record. But that's the that's the big uh, big plus for me this season is seeing 17, 13s. Um, that's just yeah, amazing. Moon's close right up here. Yeah, definitely. I think both boats now will be fighting pretty hard. Um, Moon and were trying for a lee bow there, but Imi have managed to get over the top of them. Is that right arm over Rob? Yep, there it goes. Or the left arm <laughs> on Rob Napper has assumed the position. That's the yeah, difference. Look at the difference. The Rob Napper arm has just... <laughs> that's that's instant five metres. You've, you've seen the gun show on him, though, right? <laughs> I used to miss him doing it, like putting his arm out, and I, like I wasn't watching, and I turned around and almost give myself <laughs> yeah. a black eye every time. Knock yourself out. <laughs> Okay, they may have been able to ease the sheets by a few, few millimetres, but <laughs> we're going to call it the Robert, Rob Napper effect anyway. <laughs> okay, we would sit on the Ivy. Let's see how that comes out. Looks like they're going to get a cleaner one than the Moonen. Oh, Moonen's gone the other way. Here we go. Splits at the top yeah, mark. Interesting. Jab set on Moonen. 
who's on red, who's on black, and it's going to be interesting because yeah. one leg played one way with Nathan and not yeah. the next. So. I think at this point in second place, going around the top mark, it's hard to follow someone downwind and win. Um, so trying something different and see how they go. And Harkin coming up currently in first position for our 13 foot skiffs. So for both the 16s and 13s, this is their last time down to the bottom mark. Um, we'll finish back through the start line. Interesting today. It's Sail uh, Racing there. It's got in front of oh, Fireball. Oh, yes, they have too. Harkin, lovely set, nice and safe. We Waits might, on the wire. Away they go. I think it's only fair that we um, maybe run down with Harkin for their final run to the finish, being that they... Become club champs. Become club champions for the first time and give the 13s a bit of love. Yep, absolutely. So how about we do that? Keep an eye on the, uh, the 16s and we'll jump down to them when we think they're getting close to the finish. But Sail Racing locking in third place. Windward set. Or is it a shoot on the boat? <laughs> Nicely done anyway. Nicely done anyway. They just look like they're out for a leisurely sail, don't they? Yep. <laughs> There's that big man, Dave Birkin, going past in the flu. <laughs> Harkin on fire. That's nudging up towards six, seven minute lead now, maybe eight minute lead. Yeah. It's insane, isn't it? Doing really well. There's the Botany scaffold oh, and Botany, Botany access together. Botany, Botany. That'll make for a good photo, I hope. <laughs> Unfortunately, Hart can stole the show there, being the uh, <laughs> oh, I think we'll champions. Let them... uh, there we go, Botany waiting. and Botany on screen. Harkin's just got a really lovely jive in. Orlando straight out on the wire. Looking nice and safe. Maybe no more jobs? It's probably one more, I'd say. One or two more. Even getting a courtesy slow down from the ferry, are we? Yeah, we've trained them well over this season, so yep. <laughs> thank you very much to all the ferry drivers that have been watching and helped us out, especially last week. It was incredible, some of the, uh, the courtesy that the, the drivers gave us for the uh, during the JJ Gilton Championships. Well, not us in particular, the, the competitors, but it was amazing to see. A boatload of people coming from the sea, lucky enough to see the Harkin sailing down to win the club championship. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so Harkin about to go over some ferry wash now. Oh, too easy. Yeah, too easy. kept it nice and smooth. Something I really liked about what he Heidi's doing is she's constantly looking around. She's looking up, checking the mains, still looking good, checking under the sails. Orlando's checking behind them for any wind shifts. So they've got a comfortable lead, lead but they're still working hard. Now remember, we've got Imi on screen here and Moonen at the top mark split off with them. So Moonen are uh, off to the left. Seems as far as I can see, Imi might be in front here. I have to agree with you, Jess. I think they're going to be just in front. Yeah, you got to say they've got that, don't you? Yeah. They're that comfortable Rob Knapp has got both arms in front of himself. 
<laughs> Don't even need the extra arm. Um, no, like, he'll, he'll, he'll still be working the ring out of that shoot, that's for sure. So there's Moonen coming in in second place in the background. You see Rob running forward there and back, like that's on every wave yeah. he does that. He doesn't stop, even when you're yeah. heading out to the start line, he's doing that. Nicely done, boys, nicely done. There's Sahuda, well done to them. Oh, good on, good on Moon and go the other way to give us a... Yeah. So a Moon, like that. Moon and getting second, gives them mm -hmm. obviously two points. If so, racing get three points. They're tied, the on 20, tied on 23 and you said the countback goes to Moon, did you say? Uh, I'm not sure about countback for this one. Who's got the best result? Oh, is this one, is it? Okay, so we'll... Two first for Sail Racing. And Moon and Scott. One first and no, only one first. So does that yeah. mean Sail Racing gets so it? So I think Sail Racing Second. would win on count back then. I'm so going to trust you, you're a school teacher, so. <laughs> Back to this outstanding performance today by the Harkin team. I've yeah. I haven't Absolutely. seen a win in the 13s or the 16s like this in a long, long time. Yeah, next boat are uh, out of sight at this point in our 13s. They've just sailed a really smooth and really clever race. This is what, yeah, this is what I really like to see, you know, a, a champion winning the last race is yep. always for me a, a yep, absolutely. big thing. And they've shown they can sail in any conditions. We've had really strong winds in this series, really light winds, mixture of directions. Um, so yeah, on screen we've got Harkin winning the club championship, first year in the 13s and winning is just outstanding. That's pretty good, pretty good. Nicely done. Well done, there it is. And confirming that Sail Racing did cross the line in third, so as far as we could see on results in the 16-foot skiffs, Imagine Signage will be first overall. Um, Sail Racing and Moon and Tide on second, with Sail Racing winning on Countback. I was just about to say, there's no emotion, and then a Lando turned around <laughs> after packing the spinnaker and gave us a big fist pump, so congratulations to them. And this is going to be tight crossing the line here. Red yeah. pumps yeah. just over the, the line fireball, okay. in front of the fireball. Yeah. So fireball third to fifth. They absolutely should not be disappointed, though. I think that might be one of their best races yet. So well done to them. Tricky conditions, and they've done a really good job. That'll do heaps to their confidence. And Bartley has managed to sail a good race too. Let's well, fire fireball's first race in the single figures in the club championship. Mm -hmm. And they're both in the kick cup, Bartley and, and Fireball, so without knowing what those point scores are sitting at, uh, I can't tell you how that plays out, but they're, yeah. uh, they're both in the, the, the famous keg cup. So imagine signage seem to have done what they did every other lap, and took an early job. And if you're one of the young and up-and-comers and you're watching Nathan and uh, wondering why he does certain things, don't be afraid to go up and ask him. He's, uh, you know, he's a very pleasant guy to actually go and approach and so is Mal for better words as well and you know, more than happy to give their time to any mm -hmm. young sailor to answer any questions. So you know, if you see them around, don't be, definitely don't be afraid to go up and and say big, good day, and big Brady boy will give you a hug and give you all the advice you need. <laughs> yeah, but don't listen to Brett. He's, he comes from the Sheet Hands Union, mate. We just get there and just pull ropes hard. <laughs> Worked out all right for them. <laughs> yeah. No, very lovely guys, the uh, the crew on the boat, so. And talented. There's the Bartley sliding in nicely with the big B. So it looks like Bartley will cross the line in six. Really great race from them as well. No, they've put a lot of work into getting their boat looking nice and shiny this season, so... Yeah, it looks a glamour, doesn't it, their yep, boat? Yeah, absolutely. And that's their first 
finish for the season in single figures in the club championship. So Nathan's going to split those two, sneak in between them. There it is, club champion. Formally, anyway. Absolutely formal. And that is with his worst race of the season. Is that the drop, is it? That's the drop, seven. Who is on board? The boom is in the wrong spot for me to see both of their faces, to tell you. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like one of those... Uh, yeah, can't show their face on... <laughs> this man's a dentist. Yeah. <laughs> And the fluid sliding over. I think Dave Burkett's held the crew together today quite nicely. Carried people like Phil Harmer most of the day. Obviously, the better sailor on board that boat. Who's yes. steering that today? Chad Beebe, I gather. Yep. Skeletor. Oh, yep. No, Skeletor's on the helm. Here comes the shebang. Oh, Dave's beaten out. That's a good afternoon at the club for those two. Okay, there's... Uh, <laughs> Berkey just yelled out, give my regards to Kingy, so there was obviously some sort of bets on there. And for the viewers at home, that's Kingy finishing one boat behind him. Here we go, the well, mighty the typhoon. Off. Yeah, here comes the other part of the, the late night trio at the club. Typhoon with Imagine signage spinnaker, not enough to keep him up with the other Imagine. Nice work, Ed. Sort of proud of these guys on fire, so I can say probably a minute behind and managed to get right back through normally there. Yeah, and Outback Marine 2 started with them a minute yeah. behind. Yeah, they, these two boats have been like glue all season. Yeah, like they if have. you <laughs> if you follow either one of them, you just look for if you can't see the boat you're going for, you look for the other one and it won't be far yep. far off it. Now Jimmy, is that red boat? That that's the same red boat from way, way, way back. Two thousand and eight, so. mate. So to devolve the boats, that's some magical work by you, Dolly. It's uh, still looking as pretty much good as it did the first day. Um, makes a great boat, Dolly, when he does, but hope Dolly's going all right wherever he is. Dolly's away this week at uh, Windsor for Championships. It's uh, some series that he's in, and he's leading it, and he worked out if he wasn't there this weekend, he couldn't win it. So right. he's, off, he's off there to win it. Nice work. So yeah, he, he asked me if it was OK if he There's had the, the day off. finishing the uh, <laughs> Finishing over the line. Just ahead and of the just, sail yeah, media. Just the sail media. It's all, all go at the, the moment here at the finish line. And well done to Ewix too. They've had two really good years in the 13, so it's nice to see them have some tough competition this year. Um, and was it the Ewix crew that got their sponsors back in the club? Yes, yeah. so shout out to them. Smiles on board. I can honestly say that in the last two years, I don't, I'd never heard of the word Ebix before, but that's one sponsorship that has paid off nicely. <laughs> they're always, yeah, in the, they're always in the results, always on the TV. And another two of the smiliest kids, like uh, you remember after the, the Nationals, Jess, yeah. and yeah, they just got pipped for a second. They were still yep. smiling and very happy. And it's a testament to the to the family, I guess. It's just how they the great great sports. So yeah. good on them. Yeah. Fierce competitors, but friendly off the water, and I think that's a good spot to be, definitely. There's a hero employment of Will Devola at the helm. Well, I think we might uh, take the opportunity to wrap things up here with uh, things getting a little bit spread out as the uh, Botany Scaffold there on the screen with Sophie and Bella. And I um, just wanted to say thanks, Rolf, for coming out and joining us in commentary. Jess, as always, a stellar job. Thank the you. diamond in the rough we found back in November. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, 100%. But if you're not sailing next year, Jess, and we've got this gig again, you'd yeah, expect, I'll be back expect for sure. a call. Good stuff. <laughs> but, um, thanks, Jimmy, for having me. And apologies to the viewers. I'm not a dolly. Dolly is so good at this compared to me. But uh, I've had a great time and uh, love watching the race today. And like I said 28 times, these 13 foot skiffs, love them. Love them. Yeah, it's uh, it's great to see. And, you know, like, hopefully more next year. And, um, you know, we go get on to bigger and better things. So it's, uh, you yeah. know, 
testament to the club and um, yeah so well this has been a sale media production for the well, man you, you can happy say whatever you like happy 80th birthday to my son Cooper from two days ago sorry sorry Jimmy you can, <laughs> anything else Just shameless plug if you <laughs> anything else you're the boss mate you, you're no, the one who signs off on the bills to be paid so oh, we just want to make sure <laughs> Cooper comes back to wash dishes at the club every shift so I must see my throw that in there <laughs> now he'll come down drinking with us that's the problem <laughs> but um, no well th huge thanks to the Manly 16 foot skiff club for again entrusting sale media to cover their, their, uh, their media works out here on the water. We've had an absolute pleasure doing it for here and obviously for the, the Nationals um, down at St George for the, the club and um, you know, we really look forward to hopefully being invited back next year to do it all again. Spoke to, spoke to Graham during the week, you are being invited back. Very good, thank you. Damn, I should have. Yep, anyway, we live and learn. But no, that's good. We're looking forward to that. That's even better news. So tune in next season. We'll um, Keep an eye on Manly 16 Foot Skiff, Manly 16's Facebook page, which is the sailing page, and also Sail Media's page um, as to what we're going to be up to in the off-season moving forward. Um, we're back out for one last day tomorrow for the uh, 18 Foot Skiffs for Queen of the Harbour. If you can't get enough of... what, How come you didn't get it going? Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> they knew she'd win. They knew she'd win. That's what I reckon. All right. <laughs> Well, Warren, if you're listening, Jess is still available. I'm come through sale <laughs> media management here. Um, all right, and um, so thanks to the awesome team on board here um, with, with Dylan on the drone and Sammy down there trying to keep an eye on the drone and catch it, especially out in the seaway. It's quite a bit different to up the harbour. Piers, as always, on the main camera, awesome work, and Chits piecing this all together all season. and. Um, Lots and lots of stuff behind the scenes and can't do a lot of it without you, mate, so thank you. Um, and, yeah, great news. So our media's back next year to cover the 16s. That's the best news of all. So uh, this, has you, been, this has been a Sail Media production for the Manly 16-foot skiff sailing club.